This week's edition of Pendragon Recap is sponsored by Pendra Community Hospital, a proud supporter and official physical therapy provider of Pendragon Athletics. Head coach Josh Warren joins us now uh, talking about last Friday's 58-26 uh, to loss to Winnebago on the road. Um, coach, first thoughts, uh, I guess from saying what I said last week, uh, Winnebago looks much more improved um, than, what, than I gave them credit for. Uh, did you get that same sort of sense that the team you saw on film um, wasn't as nearly as good as the team you actually played on Friday night? Uh, yeah, I think... We did a lot of things to make them look good as well. I mean, not taking anything away from them, but not a lot of stuff went our way, so it's I pretty tough to overcome that. I noticed they did a lot of um, things kind of you shouldn't do in a football game. They would uh, they would go one way and then throw across field, and it's and it worked for them. Um, they had receivers that catch, and they, they were just open for the quarterback. They kind of helped, saved him on a lot of situations, and. Um, they kind of caught your defense off guard, and uh, I don't know. They were, just weren't able to respond. Why do you think that was? So I don't know. It was we're spinning our wheels right now, looking at what we can do to, you know, put the kids in a better situation. Um, but you know, we just did a lot of things that we haven't done in practice, and uh, you know, we got down, and it just I don't know. Things just didn't go our way. So. You had a uh, Mark Dunn return into the the running game for you, and he looked pretty good coming off that hyperextension injury. Um, he didn't he didn't you know, worsen or anything by being back in the game. He looks like he's back to 100 percent or close to now. Yeah, yeah, we did conditioning this morning, and he looked pretty good. So, all right, and um, you know, I guess you don't get to play on turf a lot as an eight man team did that have any effect i had noticed when benny oliver was going for a two point conversion on the first touchdown he had he kind of slipped on it um i don't think that won or lost the game but that that's kind of a different thing playing on turf well yeah i don't know i mean it is what it is and i don't want to make excuses but we just gotta play better okay coach better so um but now coming into this <coughs> next week uh we were talking beforehand that uh, that Winnebago game, Winnebago game was a very winnable game, but coming this week is a very winnable game as well. And it kind of gets a you know, just down the road rival in Emerson Hubbard. Um, you're going to be taking them on again on their homecoming. It was Winnebago's homecoming. It'll be uh, Emerson Hubbard's uh, homecoming. They're two and two on the year. Um, at least looking at their stats, they look very similar. Um, to the Pender team that you coach, it's gonna. Be, it looks to be like it's gonna be a very close game. Um, from what you know so far, or what you've seen, or I don't know if you've watched film yet, um, do you get that same kind of stance on it? They look very similar to your team. I think every week you go, you look at a game and you you know you try to find ways to win. Um, so, with that being said, you just you know hopefully we can game plan to the best of our abilities and put the kids in a good situation and just. Hopefully we have, you know, better athletes than we do, or than they do. So that first victory seems to elude you so far. But four games in, what do you think the biggest thing your team has learned um, that will prob that will hopefully help you in uh, in getting that first win? Hopefully they learn that they don't like losing, and that needs to show up during the off season in the weight room and you know and on the field as well. And they need to, you know, dig deep and find it within themselves and you know, and pull that win out. All right. And I guess to f the final thing, uh, what do you think is the key to victory um, over Emerson Hubbard? Uh, limit our turnovers, create turnovers, and score more points than they do. All right, sounds good. Coach Ward, thanks a lot. Yep. They gave a great effort, but that just wasn't enough for the Pender High volleyball team to top Class C2 second-ranked Humphrey Lindsay Holy Family on Tuesday night in Pender. The Lady Pendragons are now 5-9 on the year after losing the match three sets to one by scores of 25-18, 19-25, 25-18, and 25-21.
Three players, Maggie Philippi, Sierra Kirkland, and Shelby Roth, led Pender's offensive attack with seven kills apiece. Philippi also led the team in blocks with eight. Lexi Ostrand and Aaron Sorensen both contributed two ace serves each. Sorensen was also responsible for 17 assists and recorded 23 digs on the defense. PHS coach Ashley Bessmer doesn't dwell on the rough patch the team seems to have hit after dropping the last six matches. With plenty of volleyball to play in the coming week, she thinks the girls can pick up quite a few W's and return to their winning ways. Pender was scheduled for action Thursday night in a triangular with host Emerson Hubbard and Neely Oakdale. The Lady Dragons will also compete in the Clarkson Tournament, which begins at 9 a.m. this Saturday. Due to a mix-up in scheduling, the Pender High cross-country teams returned to action last Thursday after a 10-day break felt a bit rushed, though all the Dragon runners still managed to run pretty solid times. Unfortunately, Pender coach Dusty Cruzmark forgot to double-check the start time of the North Bend invite, so the PHS bus arrived at the event just after the Varsity Boys race had already gotten underway. Despite the mistake, all of Pender's runners still got to compete, with the boys taking third overall behind Skyler and Gretna in the junior varsity race. PHS was led by senior Matt Urbanik, who took fourth in the race, while sophomore Austin Pearson placed seventh to earn a medal as well. The varsity girls race was unaffected by the late arrival, as Danny Rutar was able to earn a medal with a tenth place finish, while fellow senior Lee Hess took 18th. Cruzmark said he felt bad about the mistake, but he was glad that everyone still got to compete. The Pendragons were scheduled to compete again Thursday afternoon at the South Sioux City Invite. Pender High's girls golf team finally got the whole band back together, but it was Hardington Cedar Catholic that was able to sing a victory tune in a dual victory over PHS at Twin Creeks Golf Club on Monday. Senior Shelby Anderson led the team by shooting a 52, but it was junior Kaylee Athey who had Pender coach Bob Rayner beaming. Athey's score of 57 was the second best performance of the day, and Rayner was happy to see how much she's improved over the course of the season. Returning from a long illness, senior Alyssa Weiss showed a little rustiness, but still managed to card a 74, while sophomore Lexi Schmetting managed a 78. During the East Husker Conference Tournament, hosted by Oakland Craig and played at Stanton's Elkhorn Acres Golf Course on Saturday, Anderson again was the top performer for Pender garnering a 117 on the 18-hole course to place fifth individually. Athey shot a 141 while Schmetting scored a 164 at the conference meet. Pender will compete in its final regular season meet this Saturday at the Oakland Craig Invite in Oakland at 9.30 a.m.